Good day to everyone. Thank you for coming to today's Folio Forum, which is sponsored by the Open Library Environment in partnership with EBSCO and Index Data. My name is Rachel Fadlon, and I'm the Folio Community Engagement Manager at EBSCO and the host for today's event. Our topic today is Folio Firsthand, Folio in the UK. Today's session, like all fo Folio Forums, is being recorded and will be posted to the Open Library Environment website. As an open forum, participants can see each other and all questions submitted, and we have muted everyone except the speakers to ensure good sound quality. We value your participation and encourage you to engage in the topic. Use the question box within the WebEx to answer questions and comments as they come to you. The speaker will address the questions at the end of the presentation. If you like to tweet, please use the Twitter hashtag FolioForum. We also encourage you to continue the conversation on this topic on the Folio Discussion website, discuss.folio.org. Our speaker today is Diane Bruxford, University Librarian and Director at the University of Aberdeen. With that, I'll turn it over to Diane. Good morning, everyone. Okay, I think you can hear me now. So I'm going to keep speaking until someone says otherwise. Good morning, it's nice to um, not see all of you and to be able to talk to all of you this morning. This is a unique exercise in speaking to people you can't see, so bear with me if I seem hesitant occasionally. I'm going to speak about folio, um, not as an expert in folio, I am far from that. But I'm speaking about it from the viewpoint of someone who is very interested, who wants to learn more, who sees some of the possibilities for my library and for the community. So let me give you a little bit of background where I am. Um, I'm at University of Aberdeen, which is an ancient, we're very proud of being an ancient research university. Uh, the new building, which you see on your screen, was opened in um, 2011 the fall of 2011, and it holds only a third of our book collection. Um, the others are elsewhere, which is a whole other discussion. Uh, it's a very collaborative environment in Scotland. We have SCURL, the Scottish Confederation of University and Research Libraries, and Shettle, which is the um, journal purchasing arm of SCURL. I'm also active in RLUK. Um, and of course, you know, we have the wider environment, but as librarians, you know how collaboratively we work together. That's certainly our case. Um, we have extreme storage needs. One of the big issues we have is the fact that a third of the collection is in another building on campus, which the principal would have me empty tomorrow if I could, and a third is off campus in a storage facility that we have to pay for. Um, which the principal doesn't like paying for. And I think this is probably not an unfamiliar situation for many of you. Um, the budget is tight for collections, um, for anything, and getting tighter. Um, also within Scotland, we have um, a framework that was done maybe a year and a half ago uh, for purchasing of a, of a library management system or integrated library system, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, that ties our hands a little bit for what we would do if we were making a change to our LMS or ILS, but not completely, and it's not a permanent decision. So um, I am watching the ILS world very closely to see what the options are going to be in the next couple of years. Okay, so this is the, the world we all live in, change in libraries. Um, we have new things coming, we have emerging requirements, we are more and more being asked to support research in new and interesting ways. Our collections and our spaces are changing constantly. Um, the need for more space for students and less space for collections is um, ubiquitous. And we have evolving user needs. We use user experience statistics to look at what do our users need us to do and how much of it is the same as what we've always done. Probably not a lot. We're doing a lot more of those left turns or right turns and not just going straight down the path that we've been taking for, well, decades, centuries. 
So this is a concern for me. Now, this isn't my slide. I was given this slide as, you know, here's, here's a deck of 80 slides, and, you know, if there's anything you'd like to use, I like this slide. Um, the big fish have been eating the little fish very quickly in um, the world of library automation and the world of library resources in general. Um, we are having fewer and fewer options. We have these monolithic systems, and you have to buy the system. This I find very concerning that we have so few choices. Um, once you lose your choices, then you really, from the vendor you do have, you get even fewer and fewer choices because they don't have competition and they don't have to. And maybe that sounds a little cynical, but maybe I am a little cynical. Okay. So this is a typical ILS. Everything is in one box. It's in the bureau, it's in the dresser, and you get them all. You don't get to choose which drawers you purchase. That's the ILS we've been working with for years, whichever one you have. Folio is trying to do something a little different in that they're trying to give you in a new fancy closet where you get to make choices, where you get to say, don't want so many drawers, I want to hang things up, I want to add some things. So that's the goal. Okay, yeah, new functions and traditional functions. Well, I'm gonna, I, I have some things to add. Okay, so this is like, I, I did this presentation six months ago or something similar. Since then have some new information, have some new ways of looking at it and haven't done a lot of updating on my slide deck. So I apologize for that. This is something new. Um, Folio, we all hear about it as the new open source ILS. So let's just, before we even talk about that a whole lot, let me do a little review of what Folio is and what it isn't from what I know. Again, I am not an expert, but I'm telling you, as a university librarian, this is what I see. So Folio is not EBSCO, for starters. I think there's still some um, misunderstanding about that out there. EBSCO has made a major investment in Folio from their social responsibility arm, from their charity arm. They're investing in this product that is an open source product. Now, they, along with anyone else who wants to, will host an open source product for you as at least one other of the big ILSs have already said, oh yes, develop Folio and we'll host it for you. So it is an open source, but very few of us have the resources to host and manage an open source system. Um, so we'll be looking for someone to do it for us if we want to go with Folio. The current belief is that paying someone to host Folio for you as opposed to having Innovative or um, Aleph or Alma or whichever version of whichever, Cersei, whatever you have, will cost about half of what you're paying now for a current ILS. Um, in my budget environment, that's very interesting, but it's not the only reason I'm interested. So, okay, what is Folio? It's not EBSCO. It is an open source product. The code that it's being written resides at the Open Library Foundation. Now, you know, we're going to have the word open in here a lot. And to complicate it a little bit, Olay, which we all know is an open source ILS that's been working, Koali Olay, Olay has joined with Folio. They have, they're rolling themselves into Folio, but they have, this is new code. They're not, Folio is not taking the Olay code and updating it. Olay has been um, developing over, quite a few years now, and when something develops slowly in the ILS world or in any online world, um, time moves on without them, and some of the code has moved on. So this is new code um, residing at the Open Library Foundation that will make up Folio. Now, Folio, you need to think of Folio as a platform, and we were talking about that a little bit when you look at the um, this type of thing. You know, it's not a box. It's, oh, gotta get through those. It's a platform. So 
as a platform, Folio is much more in line with the app culture. So there will be apps to do many different things. So Folio was described to me recently as, this is a quote, an open ecosystem for the integration of various library resources. Now, when you're looking at it from the ILS point of view, you're thinking acquisition, circulation, you know, all the, the traditional ILS things. But as a platform, Folio also could be a place where we bring together a lot of the systems we use. So an app for your institutional repository, for your discovery service, whoever has it. It wouldn't matter. You could use any discovery service on Folio. Doesn't matter whose discovery service you buy, you could, you'd be able to use it on Folio. Um, archives management, reading list management, whoever you use for these various things. Folio, one of the, one of the difficulties I have is all these different sign-ons we have for all of our different products, but Folio is a platform just may be the answer to a single sign-on for everything in the library that you go into Folio, you sign into Folio, and then you can get into all of these other systems without signing in again. So was at a meeting recently where um, some people who do know a lot more about Folio than I do said, you, would, you could buy Folio, buy. You could implement Folio, open source, and if you have to back up the people in your organization to do so, at, at no cost, it is open source, and, but not use it as your ILS, use it as the place where you bring together your institutional repository, your archives management, your reading list management, whatever you're interested in. And um, those things will all be developed. Over time, then maybe ILS is the next step. It, that's a big step. Changing ILS is always a big step. So the Folio as a platform, to me, is the newest way I've been thinking of it and is very intriguing. Okay, so this is, you know, this is the same thing we've been talking about. No longer a single suite, a platform with apps, the service layer with APIs, it's all there. So as Folio has been developing, um, this, you know, open source needs to come from the community. It can be invested in by a big organization, a big, that's fine. But if the community doesn't bring it on, it's not going to happen. So this is what's been happening with the community around Folio. I'm not going to read the slide to you. Happy to have you um, look at that. Index data is a huge player in this and developing code um, as they're moving forward. And I'll get a drink of water while you're looking at this lovely slide. Okay, terrible slide. Something you can't, can hardly read because of all the commas. And the idea of this is the breadth of people who are interested in the library, in the Folio system. These are people who are um, signing on at least as people who are interested in following and, and wanting to know what's going on. So, you know, you just look at it and, and jump, the names start to jump out at you. Latvia, Hungary, um, Taiwan, Philippines, Alabama, University of Alabama, Auburn, it's all over the world. Cornell and Duke in the U.S., big players, University of Chicago, Texas A&M. Um, the Folio community is, is very broad, point there. Okay, so some of the goals of Folio. First, to create a community where we can come together to innovate. I think that's a great goal. We do come together a lot as a community. Libraries are very consortial. Um, but we don't always have the opportunity to come together and innovate. We often come together to talk about what we're already doing. Or this, we meet regularly with all the people who are on the same system we're on so we can figure out how the heck to use it, how to get the best out of it. But this is an opportunity where we get to say what we want from an ILS. We get to say how it should work and help bring it together. 
Uh, reducing cost is always good. Number two, leveraging open source to reduce cost. There is no free lunch. We all know that. But must we pay um, for things we don't use? In every ILS, there are portions of it that aren't significant for our library system. And is that necessary? Or does the ILS have everything we need? So here's an opportunity to um, get what you pay for. Um, again, because it's open source, if you're in an environment where you have the IT support, then you pay for that IT support. Otherwise, you will, of course, be looking at a hosted system for considerably less than what we're paying today. Number three, we've talked about a little bit already, increasing library involvement in the development. This is very important. There are a lot of opportunities to do this, and if you go to um, the Folio web pages to open library environments, um, there, are, there are ways to do it. Very important that if you have something that you think Folio really should include, someone recently was just saying, oh, archives management, are you kidding? I have people who would love to be in on that. Well, they can be. Get involved, give them a call, go online and see what they're doing. And then four, again, to talk about um, choice. You get choices in what you are investing in, whether it's investing your time and your people or your pounds, dollars, and euros. Oh, I forgot I put check marks on there. OK, we have check marks. OK, ways to engage. Join the forums. That's pretty simple. That's online. Um, you can lurk or you can speak and write whatever you're interested in doing, but join the forums and see what's going on. There are a variety of special interest groups, SIGs, and again, you'll find these online, um, where you can find like-minded people who are interested in developing a particular app or a particular section within Folio and um, have your say. Put forward SMEs, and you know what? I will have to admit that from the last time I gave this presentation six months ago, I do not remember what SME stands for. I believe the concept is to put forward ideas for additional products or different additional apps that you think should be included in Folio. So if you see Folio developing in particular areas, but you think there's another area that really should be included, then there's an opportunity to do that. It might be by starting a special interest group, or it might be by finding other people within Folio who are interested in that. Um, the Folio community is looking for early adopters, people willing to do Q&A with them. They're looking for testers. There are many ways to engage. Some of these will be at the technical level. So if you have people who are IT folks, if you have acquisitions people or circulation people, technical within the particular realm that's being developed, um, Folio needs all of those people. They also need managers and administrators who can talk to them about what the needs are overall for the libraries and what the needs are for, um, well, the ways that their library can engage. Libraries are much less apt to engage um, if they're director or at least someone um, in leadership is not interested in the product. Okay, so here's my viewpoint. I think there are long-term wins here, or at least the possibilities of such. Innovation, cost control, reduction, collaboration. These are things that are all important to libraries, and I believe Folio um, can really take us a step forward on that. I'm in a situation where um, the framework agreement for my country, my nation, my portion of the UK for Scotland requires me to go with a particular vendor if I upgrade at this time. But at the same time, the system I'm on, I've been told by that vendor, will be supported for another 10 years. So the reality is I don't have to make a change yet. I don't have to decide that I'm going to go to the next generation system that's now available to me at increased costs from my already high cost. I can wait. Um, so if you look at the short-term actions, you can join the conversation. You can volunteer your expertise. 
you can monitor. I'm, I'm working really hard on these last two, monitor and wait. Um, we expect to see the core of um, Folio available, available for use, not just, oh, here's a possibility, but available for use in 2018. That's right around the corner. I can wait that long. So um, I'm very interested in collaborative systems. I'm very interested in a system that will serve all of Scotland because of our needs for storage. I believe we need to work together to solve our storage problems. I need, believe that collaborative collection development will become more and more important to us. So I can't go and just sign up for a system that no one else in Scotland is signed up for unless it's a system that is flexible enough that we can still work with each other and still get what we need. I don't see the standing ILSs out there as being options for that. The folio might be, and it might be that it develops in such a way that um, more of us start going that direction and we swing the pendulum back toward open source. Okay, that is the slide deck. This is our tagline for the university, transforming the world with greater knowledge and learning. I think it is applicable in this situation. So I think that leaves us open for questions and I'll turn it back over to Rachel. Diane. Um, yes. Given that there is, oh sorry, given that there is active, important, and strong collaboration between Scottish libraries, what role would you like Aberdeen to play in the folio community? Well, for me, it's very much about um, encouraging people to not make quick decisions, to not sign up for something else that will tie their hands for two or three years. So if I'm speaking to my colleagues and, and saying, here's a possibility, take another look, monitor this, think about how this could work for all of us. We have a um, Scotland's school within Scotland has the Collaborative Collection Development Committee. And it's something we'll be looking at too as we're considering for us all to collaborate we collaborate a lot already on purchasing, on um, how we work within the sector. But if we're going to collaborate on collection management and collection development, we have to have a way that our um, metadata can be accessible and usable for all of us and that we can do some serious comparisons. The places I've seen that work were places that had a shared ILS. So, I think we have a possibility for a new ILS that could really transform, but if we all make decisions very quickly to tie our hands to something else for another two or three years, then that just sets that, that decision, that possibility back two or three years. So um, at this point, I just I make sure I talk to people about it and um, look for opportunities to say, here's another option. It's not there yet, but pay attention. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. It looks like we don't have any other questions okay. this time. Just make sure. Sure. No? Okay. So this concludes today's Folio Forum on Folio Firsthand, Folio in the UK. You can continue the conversation at the Folio Discussion website, discuss.folio.org and on Twitter using the hashtag Folio Forum. The recording of today's forum will be posted soon to the openlibraryenvironment.org website. Our next Folio Forum will be on Wednesday, March 15th with the topic Folio Roadmap Update, Spring 2017. And you can go to that same website for more details and the link to register. Thank you to our speaker, Diane Bruxford, and to everyone who asked questions and added comments.